Hello everybody and welcome to the world of condition monitoring of rotating machinery. Today this presentation is all about essential machinery and how good condition monitoring can be implemented by using different GE Bentley Nevada monitoring systems. My name is Petri Noinek and I'm your presenter today. I have more than 25 years of experience of condition monitoring serving various industries including oil and gas, power generation, metal and mining, food, chemical, pulp and paper, and general manufacturing. For last 11 years I've been working for GE Bentley Nevada on different positions in sales, training and also machinery diagnostics. During these years I've been working on traditional turbo machinery but also on wide range of smaller balance of plant machinery used widely across all of these industries. Here is my email address, so if you want to contact me, please do not hesitate to do so. This presentation will be divided into two sections. On the first part we will discuss general issues, what are the essential machines, and what general aspect can be considered when selecting a monitoring system for these machines. On the second part we will go through the Bentley Nevada offering and discuss some of the main points that make sure that you pick the right solution to best fit your needs. Typically production facilities have only a few main production units, which are considered critical for the production. On top of the critical machine there is a much larger number of machines, usually referred as essential, which are important for the production but usually do not actually make the final product. So if we look at the picture we have here, which is a power plant, we have a steam turbine and a generator, these are considered as critical for the production, then we have a pumps, and fans over here and here, which are the essential machines. No matter what the industry you select, there is typically a small number of critical machines and a much larger number of essential machines on each production facility. When comparing essential machines to critical machines, we will find some differences between these two classes. Typically essential machines are motor driven, while critical machines may be turbine driven. Typically essential machines are equipped with rolling element bearings, while critical machines more often do have journal bearings. Rotational speed on essential machines is typically in an area which is not considered high or low, while critical machines may operate with much higher speed. Especially with critical high-speed turbo machines, these machines must be equipped with API classified protection system, while essential machine this requirement is rarely faced. Examples of essential machines are pumps, fans, motor, gearboxes, conveyors, screw compressors, and so on. Very often critical machines, especially turbo machines with journal bearing, are monitored and protected with the GE Bentley Nevada 3500 system. Connected to the System 1 asset management platform, this solution has become an industry standard. While this solution is ideal for high-speed critical machines, it's not always the best solution for essential machines. Reasons are Price per channel. A rule of thumb for price difference between the system is that monitoring through protection system is about twice as expensive as monitoring using scanning devices. Main reason here is the signal processing. On protection system there is dedicated signal processor for each channel. On a scanning system several input channels share the same processor. Number of different analyses per channel is also a key here. Protection system typically gives you only one type of data from a single vibration sensor. If you have an accelerometer you can get either velocity data or acceleration data, not both. This is not limited on a scanning system. Using the same accelerometer, one can get acceleration data, velocity data, and acceleration enveloping data. This is very helpful on essential machinery application, where certain machinery problems require one type of dynamic data in order to be detected in very early phase, and another type of data to be monitored in late phases. Analysis functionality is also a differentiator. Acceleration enveloping was already mentioned, and this functionality is not available on all protection systems. Also frequency and amplitude resolution is usually better on scanning systems compared to the protection systems. The basic difference comes from the production functionality. 
Since this is the highest priority of a protection system, the condition monitoring needs cannot compromise this functionality. On scanning system where time is not an issue, there is no limit for a system to perform all kinds of calculation from each input signal. There are several different monitoring systems targeted mainly for the essential machinery. The selection of the system depends on many factors. Maintenance practices, process requirements, how early a machine problem needs to be detected, production losses in case of a machine failure, other consequences of a failure, budget for condition monitoring, condition monitoring expertise in-house, manpower available. Maintenance practices can be divided into three categories. Run to failure, time-based maintenance, condition-based maintenance. It's clear that if maintenance practice is time-based or run to failure, then condition monitoring has not much value to give. And it must be stated here that there are many rotating assets that should have this kind of maintenance practices. However, on today's industry it has been realized more and more that for each asset the maintenance practice should be individually defined. And for those machines that fall into condition-based maintenance section, a proper monitoring system should be selected. Process plays an important role here. If you have a plant operating 24-7, you will need a different condition monitoring than if you are running your plant 8 hours a day, 5 days a week. It all falls into defining the critically of a single machine for the production. In a perfect world, a critically analysis for the whole plant has been performed and maintenance practices and condition monitoring operations are selected accordingly for each asset. How early a machine problem or misuse of machine should be detected? Different machine problems do have very different PF curve. P stands for the time when the first symptom of the failure can be detected. F stands for the time when the machine actually fails. In a couple of slides later we will discuss more details about the PF curve. It's very important that the monitoring system is selected firstly to be capable to detect all the expected failures early enough and also to track the failure development. In case the PF curve is very short, an online monitoring system with protection functionally is often required. Production losses is a very important part of the criticality analysis. The higher the losses, the more important it is to detect possible problems in a very early phase and typically a higher level condition monitoring system is required. Other consequences of a machine failure may be many. Risk for employees or environment, secondary failures for the same machine train or to the other machines and so on. In many cases these aspects are not considered properly. Taking these factors fully into account the value of condition monitoring and machinery protection can become more obvious. Budget is always a limiting factor and it should be respected. Like any other investment, condition monitoring should have a proper payback. If we are only looking at the maintenance savings, then condition monitoring may not be justified. Usually the biggest impact comes from the improved operation, less downtime, less waste, less energy spent and so on. Sometimes by better quality of the production and sometimes from improved safety. In many cases, condition monitoring requires expertise to be successful. Simple monitoring may work on some occasions, but when deeper understanding is required, then either in-house or third-party service provider needs to be motivated and skillful. It's proven in many places that condition monitoring system allow does not provide value. It also requires people and process before results can be expected. In some cases, manpower is a limiting factor. Even when a company sees that condition monitoring operations are beneficial for them, the lack of manpower makes in-house operation impossible. In these cases, it's usually best to use third-party service providers. There's a large variation of essential machines, and before a monitoring system is selected, some time needs to be spent on the potential failures that can happen to each machine train. Environment and the way a machine is operated may have a major effect on likelihood of different problems. Also, maintenance practices may have an effect. It's not uncommon that each machine train has a completely different set of most probable machine problems. In that case, one must evaluate carefully if one monitoring system is good enough for all of the machines or if different systems should be used on different machines. 
If looking at industry averages, then the most typical machinery problems on essential machines are rolling element bearings, misalignment, unbalance and motor faults. Typically machine failure progress is described with a PF curve where on the left hand side of the curve the component is operating perfectly. Where the curve takes the first slope down, that's the place where the first deterioration is seen. The machine and or component may still be working ok, but the countdown for the failure has been started. Depending on the process and consequences of a failure, it's important to know in which phase of the failure development is necessary to find out the problem. The later the problem is detected, the less time there is to prepare for the necessary maintenance activities. A great deal of essential machinery problems are related to the rolling element bearings, so it's a perfect example to use here. Typically, the first signs of a bearing problems are seen when lubrication of bearings starts to fail. In this case, very high frequency vibration with low energy content shows up. If the monitoring system is not capable to detect this, then the failure can proceed without getting noticed. Since corrective actions on lubrication and machinery load may still save the bearing, it's often recommended to be able to detect bearing problem already on this phase. The more serious the bearing fault gets, the more vibration energy is seen on lower frequency area. And if the situation is such that one needs to drive the bearing very close to the failure point, using temperature measurement may be the best monitoring method since there usually is a sharp increase of temperature just before the bearing fails completely. The biggest difference between various condition monitoring systems whether they are online or whether they are portable. Typically these both systems are in use and here are listed the main points which may drive the selection to be either online or portable. The longer time there is between points P and F on the PF curve, the more likely it is that a portable system can be used for condition monitoring. This PF interval needs to be compared to the expected runtime of a machine and also to the interval in which the data is collected with the portable device. Typically with online system it's likely to detect problems much earlier than with the portable system. So it's all about if the reaction time you will get with the portable system is long enough to prepare for the needed maintenance work. Unreliable or reliable machines. This is quite self-explaining. The more likely it is that the machine is going to fail, the more there is a need for an online monitoring system. It's also worth mentioning that the condition monitoring can be a good tool finding a root cause for an unreliable machine, leading for more reliable production. Variable speed or load. The more variation there is on machine operation, the more difficult condition monitoring is by portable systems. Usually best results are achieved when a condition monitoring dataset is compared to another taking a similar condition. It's also important to understand that especially with variable speed machines, there may be problems that may be too rare to be detected with portable systems like resonances. Manpower is also quite self-explaining. The more you are using the portable systems, the more you need manpower in work. Process induced problems. It's not uncommon that faulty use of a machine is caused in the beginning of a failure. If an online system is in place, then likelihood that this is noticed in time is much higher than with the use of portable data collection. Often there are machines located in areas which are not healthy for a man. Also machines on remote areas or hard to reach places may cause an increased risk for injury when portable data collection is used and as such will lead to the use of online systems. First symptoms of rolling element bearing problems are seen on very high frequency range. In order to get this measured reliability a permanent installed accelerometer is needed. This applies also to many other machine problems including gear issues and electric motor problems. When a permanent sensor is in place then the step to the on online system is naturally smaller. In general there is a clear trend in industry that they are moving more and more to the online systems. While many of the examples shown later on the second part of this presentation may give you an impression that condition monitoring is mainly looking at the trends and as such could be easily implemented into distributed control system, in general this is not the case. While trending usually gives you the earliest warning, 
Decision of the problem, severity and exact position usually requires dynamic data and special condition monitoring software, system 1. The value of connecting these two systems together is obvious. Condition monitoring in simple form is performed on 24-7 through DCS. Any meaningful alarm will be detected and a machinery diagnostic services can be asked to diagnose the severity of the problem in more details. Also, machinery operational information from DCS to System 1 will help the machinery analysts to do their job better. When machine loads, speed and other relevant process information can be correlated with vibration data. Doing a world-class condition monitoring on your essential asset is not a rocket science, but it will not happen by itself either. The technology is the backbone of any solid condition monitoring program. But in order for that program to be successful, also company process needs to be aligned to take the full value out of the results of condition monitoring. And in order for that to happen, you need to have skilled and motivated people. Way too often we face a situation where machine failure could have been clearly seen with condition monitoring systems months in advance, but still the machine has been allowed to get destroyed. Postmortem analysis is not what these systems are designed for. Thank you for participating in this webinar. This is the end of part 1. I would like to invite you to watch the part 2 in which we cover GE Pent Nevada offering for essential machines.